I am excited to announce to you that um, we are going to be reopening Kingdom Kids on July 19th. So not this Sunday uh, that you're watching this video, but the very next Sunday. Um, and we'll be open for the 9.45 service and the 11 o'clock service. Um, and there'll be nursery available at the 9.45, but not at the 11. Um, so we're excited to be back with you. And just to let parents know, we're going to be um, checking everybody's temperature as they come in, all the kids and all of the um, volunteers. And we're going to try to just maintain social distancing um, as we get back together and learn. Um, and for those of you who are not ready to come back yet, that's okay. And, and we're going to still try to record our Bible time and some of our service time. It'll be a little bit different, um, but we're still going to try to have something ready for you um, so that you don't feel left out at home. All right, so today, uh, this is uh, our last Sunday that we're going to do this verse. Um, so uh, I want you guys to go ahead and stand up and get your hands ready. Um, and it's 2 Corinthians. 517 anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person the old life is gone and the new life has begun 2nd Corinthians 517 let's do it one more time 2nd Corinthians 517 if anyone belongs to Christ he is a new person or a new life. He has a new life. Um, the old life is gone and the new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Sometimes I forget, Miss Michelle forgets some words too. Um, but hopefully that verse, you've been learning it and it's going down deep in your heart and uh, just will help you to remember that God has gave you a new life and today in our Bible time, we're going to be talking about that too. We're going to be learning that Jesus forgives us. And we're going to hear about some men who took their friend to Jesus because their friend needed help uh, because he couldn't walk. Uh, but Jesus did something that they didn't expect, something unexpected. And we're going to hear about what that is. Um, and the thing that we're going to talk about when you pause your video, uh, my question for you today is, when did you need help? When was a time in your life when you needed help? And I'm going to share about a time for me. Um, so my family moved to from Montana to Virginia four years ago, and it was actually kind of a fast move for us. We weren't planning it, um, and we needed help. We didn't know how we were going to get here, how we were going to make the move. Um, and I remember that a pastor that I didn't even know heard about us and heard about our need and he volunteered. He said, um, I'll drive your moving truck for you if you want me to. And so that was a really big blessing because he was able to drive all the way from Montana to Virginia, which is a 36 hour drive. Um, and so he drove all the way here and he helped us unload. And then when we got here, uh, we met people at Cornerstone right away too and they came out and they helped us unload and, um, and it was just a really special time that I felt like God helped us um, and so right now go ahead and pause your video and share um, right where you are one at a time when you needed help you had some good conversation and now it's time uh, to get out your Bibles and open to the book of Luke and chapter 5 and we're gonna be talking about how Jesus forgives us well hi everybody it's good to be back with you again and um, I've got my buddy summit helping me today this is my young puppy that I got back in February and um, he is going to be my little dog. He's going to show you a wonderful new trick that he's been learning. And I'm teaching him how to say his prayers. Okay? So, Summit, Summit. Let's see. Now, he's just learning this, so you have to be forgiving because he's not very good at this yet. But this is what we're learning. Okay. Say your prayers. Okay. Dear God, help us. Do a good lesson today. Amen. Is that right, Summit? Amen. 
<laughs> good boy. That was good. All right, I'm going to give Summit a Kong, and then we're going to start talking about our story, which is about how Jesus forgives. Okay, so here you go, Summit. Here's your... That's like a nice little treat for him. Good boy. All right, so we're in Luke chapter 5, and we will, we're going to be reading, we're going to start reading right around verse 18. Um, Uh, so, you know, I asked Summit to say his prayers, and part of what, you know, God wants us to talk to him, and when we talk to him, that's really saying our prayers. Um, one of the things that we need to talk to him about is forgiving us for the wrong things that we've done. And um, we all do wrong things. Uh, I have a hard time with my temper sometimes, where I just get frustrated, and things don't go my way, and I get angry. And um, I need to, uh, when I pray to God, I need to confess that. I need to say, God, I, I, I'm sorry. I know that is not a good thing for me to do, and that's not what I'm supposed to do. And, you know, uh, please forgive me for that. And um, it makes me feel better. And um, Jesus forgives us when we come to him and we're really sorry about what we've done wrong. Um, he... He, he says, I do forgive you, and I'll give you another chance. And that's what I love about God, is he keeps giving us chances. So to, today we're going to talk about um, how Jesus forgives a man. And so we've been talking about Jesus and how he's becoming very popular, and he's becoming uh, very well known in the country of Israel. And every, you know, they're all talking about him. And when he comes into town, people follow him around. And and they, they wait for him to preach and to teach and, their, um, and all the things, the wonderful things that he does. Um, and so there's like kind of three groups of people. There's the people who follow Jesus and listen to him because they are earnestly uh, wanting to know what he has to say. To, they know that it's important. And um, this is the words of God. Um, and so it's like, shh, be quiet. I want to hear what he has to say. This is so wonderful. I love this. So those are Jesus's friends. Okay. And then there's another group of people who maybe are just coming to Jesus because they want to see something awesome happen, like maybe a miracle or somebody get healed. And so they're curious. So those are the curious people. All right. And then there's the third group of people who, um, who come and listen to him, and I call them like the spies, okay? They're like the bad people, and they're like this. You know, they got their arms crossed, and they've got this frown on their face, and they're waiting for Jesus to do something wrong so they can blame him and say, oh, you broke a law, you did that wrong, that wasn't right. They're always trying to trap him up. Okay, so he's in the town of Capernaum, and uh, which, which we've had other stories where he was in Capernaum, and he's, um, he's, he's in this house, and it's full of people. It's just a crowd of people. And uh, meanwhile, a few streets away, there is a man, and he's a paralytic. We call him a paralytic. And that means that he's lost all the feeling in his body. Um, maybe he can move his head. You know, maybe he can talk a little, maybe he can roll his eyes, but maybe he doesn't have the use of his hands or his legs. And we talked last week about how awful that would be to be like that. Um, they didn't have wheelchairs back in those days. They didn't have hospitals with doctors you could go to. Um, so if you were, if you had that condition, if you were paralyzed, it was a very hopeless life. You couldn't find a job. Somebody had to take care of you. You had to be moved from place to place. And it would be a very sad, uh, sad life. But this man had one awesome thing going for him. He had four friends, okay? And they were good friends. I mean, these guys were true, true friends, okay? And so this is what they did. The four friends heard about Jesus 
And they went to that paralyzed man, he was a young man, and they said, guess what? Guess what? We've got an idea. We've got this great idea. We're going to take you to Jesus and he's going to heal you. You know, he is the great healer. And um, so the paralyzed man is excited, but he's also scared. You can imagine what that would be like. Um, maybe, maybe he can't heal him. What if he can't heal him? He's not so sure. And, um, but uh, he says, well, how am I going to get there? And he goes, well, we're going to carry you, the four friends say. And so they make him a little mat, and they grab each grab a corner of the mat, two by his, uh, let's see, here's the two by his head, this man and this man, and here's two by his feet, and they walk him through the town. And they've got, and he's heavy, you know, so it's a big load. But these guys have faith. They believe that Jesus can heal him, and they are really good friends to do this for him. Okay. Um, so uh, they get there and oh no things aren't going so good because it's a big crowd of people they can't even get near the door and when they ask if people could move aside nobody wants to give up their place uh, they all want to hear Jesus and they don't want to deal with what's going on with this man and so they have to stop and rethink things and um, then they have another idea. They said, well, there's some stairs that go up to the roof. I haven't, let's, let's go up on the roof and we'll, we'll take it from there. So here they are. There's the four friends. There's some people gathered around the door, but they're headed up the stairs and onto the roof, All right? And when they get up there, they do the most amazing thing. They, they tear a big hole in the roof you know, um, but they are bound and determined for Jesus to heal their friend. So um, let's read Luke chapter 5 verses 18 and 19. And um, some people, in verse 18 it says, some people came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. And then verse 19 says, when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and they lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus, okay? When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. So here's what happens when they get up on the roof. Let's show this picture. <laughs> okay, so here's Jesus and he's looking up at the roof and here comes this guy with, they've got him uh, tied with the, the mat tied with ropes on in every corner and they're lowering him down right in front of this crowd and I bet that made him stop talking, okay? And uh, they cleared back and they made room for him and they lowered that man right down to the floor in front of Jesus. And it's a very odd thing that Jesus says to the man. Now, what did he want? Well, we all know what he wanted. He wanted to be healed. He didn't want to be paralyzed anymore. Okay? But instead, Jesus did something else. He said, your sins are forgiving, forgiven. All right, now, wait a minute, that isn't what they wanted, but that's what Jesus said. But he was saying that, well, let's see, let's see what happens. In the Bible, it says, remember I told you about that group that were kind of like the spies waiting for Jesus to do something bad and wrong so they could point their finger at him, okay? When they heard him say, your sins are forgiven, they were like, oh! That's awful. Only God can do that. And you're not God. All right? So they're upset. And Jesus can, Jesus knows what they're thinking. He, he knows exactly what they're thinking. And he turns, to, he turns to the crowd and he says, which do you think is easier for me, for God to do? Okay? To say, your sins are forgiven? or to say, get up and walk. And the thing is, is who can, who can heal a paralyzed man? 
not me, not you, not the President of the United States, not, not you know, uh, God can heal a paralyzed man. Who can forgive your sins? Not me, not you, not anybody around here. Only God can do that. Only God can do those two things. So he says, if I can heal, if I can forgive his sins, I can also make him walk. Um, so let's, um, yeah, and um, so here he is. He's talking to the man. This is a nice picture, too. Okay. And so he turns to the man, and he says, rise up and walk. So let's read that part in the Bible. It's verse 23 and 24. Okay. Um, so he says, Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven, or to say get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. And then verse 25 says, Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, so he took up his... He stood up. Can you believe that? That is so amazing. He, and he took what he was lying on, and he went home praising God. And I love this last picture. I was staring at it this afternoon. I love this picture, because here's the man, and he's like, Oh, gosh, he's got a big smile on his face. His life is totally changed. The sky is blue, the birds are singing, and he's got his mat under his arm, and he's headed home. He's probably thinking, what will I do first? Do I go find my mom and my dad and celebrate with them? What do I do, you know? He's got his whole wonderful life ahead of him. And then here's Jesus, and Jesus is glad too. Jesus wants to forgive our sins, and he also wants to heal us. He wants us, he wants us to, uh, to, to be happy. And, um, and here's the disciples with him, and they're just witnessing this awesome thing. And even the dog is happy. It's like everybody in this picture is happy. And oh, and up here on the roof are the four friends. Do you think they're happy? I bet they're just overflowing with joy because it was like they believed that he would be healed and then um, their faith made him well. All right, so... Um, so Jesus forgives our sins too, and um, so be quick, be quick to, if you've done something wrong, you, you know, just say a little prayer and ask Jesus to forgive you for it, and it, it just, that's what he came on earth to do, that was one of his jobs, was to forgive our sins, and, um, and I, I love that, that we can forgive others, but we also should ask God to forgive us when we do something wrong. Okay, guys, uh, we'll, I'm looking forward to seeing you all, hopefully soon. Bye. Hey, guys. All right, so it's our object lesson time. Um, and just like Miss Jenny told us, Jesus not only healed the paralyzed man, he also forgave his sins. Um, and so let's we're going to do a little uh, example here so that we can think about our sins. All right, and what, what does that mean that Jesus forgives our sins? So I have written up here on the board, this is a dry erase board, and I've written up here on with permanent markers. So this is the kind of marker that your parents say, don't write on the walls with this or don't write on your clothes because this kind doesn't come out, um, okay? So I wrote a couple words up here of some sins that I remembered from when I was your age. I remember that I lied, you know, to my parents. There were times when I did something wrong and they would ask me, did you do that or how did this happen? And I wouldn't tell the truth. I would tell a lie. Um, or there was one time uh, when I went to um, a gas station and I remember that I took some candy and my parents, so I stole, and my parents found out and they made me take it back and they said, okay, well, you have to take it back and you have to tell the owner what you did. Um, and that was really hard. Um, but it taught me a good lesson um, to not do that anymore. Um, so these are my sins. I remember I told you I wrote them. There's just a couple, but I wrote them in permanent marker. So when I take the eraser and I try to erase them, even if I scrub really hard, they don't come off. <laughs> I can't get rid of them. Um, so I want you guys to think about in your mind right now, I can't hear you, but but 
Jesus can hear you. Um, so think about in your mind right now, what are some sins that maybe you have done? Maybe this week or maybe last week or maybe today um, or sometime, all right? And I'm gonna put an X on the board um, for the sins that you're saying. You don't have to say them out loud, um, but just think in your mind what that is, all right? So I'm gonna put some X's. And I know there's more of you and more things. Um, I'm just gonna put a few on there. Um, so the bad news is that we cannot get rid of our sins by ourselves. Remember when I tried to erase? I'm gonna try to erase your exes too. Um, and we can't do it. Uh, but the good news is that Jesus died on the cross. Remember? He died on the cross for our sins and his blood is what takes away our sins. All right, so here is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use a red dry erase marker and I've chosen red to remind us of the blood of Jesus that he shed for us to pay for our sins. All right, so I'm gonna put his blood or what was representing his blood on your X. I'm gonna put it on mine that says lied I'm trying to make sure that I cover it really well. All right, and now I'm gonna try the eraser and let's see what happens. Look, check that out. So with the blood on there, or what represents the blood, Jesus' blood, we're able to wash away our sins and we're able to have them forgiven and we're able to get a fresh start. Um, and any person on the planet can do that. It doesn't matter, there's no sin that's too big for God to forgive. Um, and all anybody has to do is, just like Ms. J said, is to pray and to ask God. That just means talking to God and just to say, God, this is what I did. Um, would you please forgive me for my sin? Um, and he loves to do that. He's waiting to do that. He wants to do that. Um, and so um, I hope that this helped you um, to think about that and what that would look like. Um, and then once our sins are forgiven, the Bible tells us that they're gone and that we don't have to think about them anymore and they don't have to make us feel bad or guilty um, because they're completely gone. Uh, there's a verse that says they're thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. Um, and so that's really good news because you're not, that isn't who you are. That's just something you did, but that isn't who you are. Um, so that's really good news. Um, all right, and so your activity at home this week is going to be to use to get a roll of toilet paper. This has been kind of hard to find sometimes, right, during the <laughs> pandemic. Um, but grab a roll of toilet paper and give everybody in your house tear off one square of toilet paper. Uh, for this activity, you're also going to need a cup of warm water. That's what works best. And this time. Uh, we've been talking about different kind of markers today. This time you're gonna use a washable marker, all right? So make sure you have those. Hopefully you have some of those around. And then you're gonna write a word on the washable marker. I wrote the word sin, just cause that's what we're talking about. Um, but you could draw a picture if you want of a bird or a fish or a cross, um, whatever you want. You're gonna write a word on your toilet paper square and then everybody in your family is gonna stick their word in your cup of warm water and then wait for about 30 seconds. And then you're gonna pull it out and see if it's washed away and see if you can still read it. And it should be washed away. Um, and that's just another reminder of what happens to our sin um, and what Jesus does to our sin when we ask him to forgive us. Um, so uh, I hope you guys are having a good week at your house and I'm super excited to see some of you soon. And uh, those of you who can't see, we still love you and we miss you. Um, and we'll see you next time.